video, we are taking a look at the Sterling by Music Man Ray 4. This is the most affordable Stingray in the Sterling by Music Man line and pretty much one of the cheapest Stingrays you can get. And I've had a lot of people ask me over the years to review this bass because I reviewed the Ray 24 on the channel, which is one step above this one. I've reviewed the Ray 34, which is one that I use a lot and it's the most expensive in the Sterling by Music Man line. And people always wanted to know about the Ray 4 sub-series. So that's what we're doing in this video. And when it comes to trying out a new bass, there's two things you have to take into consideration. One is the playability, the build quality, how it feels, how does the neck feel, the weight, the balance, all of that stuff. And then second is the sound. Now when it comes to a bass in this price range, I always say focus more on the build quality, the playability, how it feels, because you can always swap out the electronics, swap out the pickups and the preamp and upgrade the bass that way and get a better sound. But the playability, the build quality, if that's not up to par, then there's nothing you can really do about that. And I can tell you that the build quality on this bass is really, really nice. The neck feels really, really nice. I was surprised how nice it feels to play this bass. It just feels effortless. Really, really nice neck. The weight is good. The balance is good. The build quality is really good. I've seen basses in this price range where the frets on the bottom will be hanging out the bottom here and you could even like, cut your hand, sliding your hand across it. But this one doesn't have that. It really came just perfectly set up. Really, really nice build quality. Now, as far as the sound, it's got this very kind of dirty mid-rangey sound, which doesn't really fit my style so much because I play a lot of, you know, slap and tapping and chordal stuff. And I like a really clear, clean, kind of scoop mid-range kind of sound. And this one just sounds kind of dirty and mid-rangey, which is cool for some people that'll work great. If you want to play like flea kind of stuff. <laughs> actually works great for that kind of stuff. If you're looking for that kind of sound, you're playing more rock stuff, works great for that. If you're playing more Victor Wooten type stuff, Maybe it doesn't work quite as good for that kind of stuff. It's just not clean sounding enough. And that's more the style of stuff that I play. So for me, pickup is a little too dirty sounding, too mid-rangey. I would probably swap out the pickup on this. But again, in this price range, my main focus is the playability and that's definitely there. I mean, with the price you're paying for this bass, spending you know an extra 200 bucks or whatever it is to get another pickup and swap it out is really not that big a deal. So yeah, I, I love the bass so far. I think the playability and build quality is fantastic. And let's actually walk through the electronics, play a bunch of different styles and see how this bass sounds just stock. So we have three knobs here. You have a volume knob and then you have a treble boost and cut and a bass boost and cut. So I'm gonna keep everything flat for now. We'll do some finger style and play around with the EQ and see how it sounds. <laughs> And now let's boost the bass all the way, see what that does. And now let's cut it all the way. And now let's bring the bass back to the middle here and let's boost the treble all the way. And now let's cut the treble all the way. So that gives you a pretty good idea of the range that you get with this EQ by boosting the bass and the treble all the way up. And I always like doing that because 
you know, some basses give you a lot more range than others. For example, my older Stingrays with the Onico pickup, when you boost the treble all the way, it's so much and so harsh that it's almost unusable. Like it gives you a really wide range and you can really, really crank that treble and the bass. And when you make the EQ adjustments, they're very drastic. And when you look at something like the new Stingray Special, for example, they tame those down a lot. Like you can boost the treble all the way on that and it never really gets very harsh. It just doesn't really drive it as much as the older ones. So I always like to, you know, boost them all the way so we really know what we're getting and how far we can push you know, the treble, the bass, and that preamp, and how much room we have to shape our sound using the onboard EQ. So now that we've seen that, let's move on to slap and see how that sounds. We all know that slap is where the Stingray really shines. So let's start with it flat, and then we'll try a few different combinations here and see what we get. <laughs> And now let's try boosting the bass a little bit and also cutting the treble a little bit. Not too much, not all the way, about like a little less than halfway. And let's compare how that sounds. So that gives you an idea of the slaps on there. I definitely like it a little bit better when you cut the treble, boost the bass a little bit. And now let's try playing with a pick because this is one area where I feel like this bass really shines. Like I said, it's really good for rock. So let's bring this back to the middle position here. We'll bring the treble back, the bass back, just keep it flat. And let's try playing with the pick. <laughs> Now let's try adding a little bit of bass to that. Do the same thing we did with the slap. I'm gonna take out a little bit of the treble so we don't get too much of the clickiness. So we'll cut that a little bit. And then we'll add a little bit of bass. So great pick sound, like I said. That dirty, kind of mid rangey sound really works for rock for this kind of playing. So, and that's what I'm saying. Like, the sound is so subjective that, you know, no one can say it sounds good or it sounds bad. It just sounds the way it is, and that either fits your style or it doesn't. For most of the stuff that I play, it doesn't really. For a lot of people, this will be perfect. So, that is the pick playing right there. Let's try a few different styles. Now, we'll try a little bit of tapping. Let's see how it does with that. So, I'm going to bring this back to the middle here, keep this flat. And let's see. So, like I said, the playability, the neck, it just feels really nice to play. That stuff is just... Feels really, really nice. It would sound better if it had a cleaner sounding, you know, pickup and preamp, but the playability, man, it just feels really, really nice. I love playing slap and tapping and all that kind of stuff for this bass. The just the width of the neck and just how it feels, it just feels really, really nice. And now let's try some chordal stuff as well. See how it does with that. And for this, I'm gonna bring the bass down a little bit, see if we can get a little more clarity out of that. And the treble, I'll just keep it right down the middle. So just cutting the bass a little, see if we get more clarity with this chordal stuff, and let's see. There you go, gives you an idea of what the bass sounds like in the upper register if you're playing chords and, and all that stuff. And then I guess to round this out, just to 
finish this off and close out this video, last thing we'll do is we'll play a little bit of harmonics because we haven't heard those on this bass yet. And for this, I'm just gonna boost the treble a little bit, about halfway, just to get those harmonics to really ring out. And let's see how it sounds. So pretty nice sounding harmonics. As Stingrays usually do, I mean anytime you have a bridge pickup, the position of this pickup is actually really good for harmonics because you want, you know, the pickup as close to the bridge as possible to really pick up those harmonics and this does a pretty good job. So that concludes the demo. I guess we did everything. We did finger style, slap, tapping harmonics, chords. So if you guys have any questions, anything else you want to see, just leave it in a comment down below. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it gave you a better idea of what to expect with this bass and what it sounds like and all that. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks.